times His praise ever in my mouth Let my soul glory in the Lord For He hears the cry of the poor The Lord
Blessed are all who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labor of your hands you shall, you shall eat. Blessed are you and blessed will you be. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to you all. Welcome to those in reality here in St. Mary's Cathedral, Kubri New and Middlesbrough, and those joining us from elsewhere as we begin the month of May. May the 1st is uh, the feast of St. Joseph the Worker. We celebrate the year of St. Joseph now from uh, the 8th, the 8th of December last year until the 8th of December this year, the Feast of Our Lady Immaculate Conception. And we're asked to look at the life of Joseph, the exemplar for our life, for the exemplar of human work. And uh, we come together as a family of God to celebrate our Mass. And the principal intention of this Mass is for Helen Lightower. Uh, and please God, from her place in heaven, she will be praying for a family uh, who mourn her and is celebrating today her birthday, which we celebrates in, hopefully, in heaven. And we come to the Lord then with all our many intentions also. Those who've died recently, those whose anniversaries are at this time, our sick, our housebound, our private intention, those who have asked our prayers. We bring them all to the table of the Lord. As we pause now to recollect ourselves, asking God's forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord of Mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord of mercy. And may Almighty God of mercy on us all, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. And so we pray. O God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of Saint Joseph and at his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the reward you promise. Father, we make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The next Sabbath, almost the whole town of Antioch assembled to hear the word of God. When they saw the crowds, the Jews, prompted by jealousy, used blasphemies and contradicted everything Paul said. Then Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly. We had to proclaim the word of God to you first, but since you have rejected it, since you do not think yourselves worthy of eternal life, we must turn to the pagans. For this is what the Lord commanded us to do when he said, I have made you a light for the nations so that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. It made the pagans very happy to hear this and they thanked the Lord for his message. All who were destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread through the whole countryside. But the Jews worked upon some of the devout women of the upper classes and the leading men of the city and persuaded them to turn against Paul and Barnabas and expel them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in defiance and went off to Iconium. But the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. 
All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. His right hand and his holy arm have brought salvation. The Lord has made known his salvation, has shown his justice to the nations. He has remembered his truth and love for the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, ring out your joy. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me? To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Joseph has uh, two feasts. Um, the official one really is the 19th of March. And uh, that's been there for centuries. This feast today we celebrate St. Joseph the Worker. And it was introduced uh, as recently as uh, 1955. It was introduced by um, Pope Pius XII. And we ask why. Well, why he introduced it was, um, and why May, why May the first? Because for centuries, well, from the 19th century, I think, um, predominantly the Communist Party uh, had seen May as the day uh, for the worker. And uh, there was an emphasis on workers' rights based on economics. And uh, Pius XII had to look at this and help the church, because that's what a pope does to guide us, to show us what the importance of human work was. It wasn't necessarily about economics or ideology or politics. It was about the very essence of working. Like Joseph is, that's why he is sanctified, if you like, of work. Because it's reflecting God's work of creation. And uh, the Pope then, we can't conclude from this 
that the church was promoting capitalism. That wasn't the issue. Um, we can say the evidence for this because subsequently we had um, Rerum Navarum, encyclical from the Pope, um, teaching document, and then we had subsequent encyclicals about human work, justice, prosperity, and so on, distribution of wealth. So we can be quite certain that this Feast of Joseph the Worker was done for very good reason, to help us to realize the value of work, human work, and not simply as a means to grab as much as we can. It's to do with St. Joseph's example of quietly going about his business as a model. And we do little, really, only in um, chapters 1 and 2 of St. Matthew and in Luke, St. Luke's, St. Luke's Gospel about Joseph. Um, there's not a lot there. So what we do have is from what we call a, an oral tradition, what is handed down by speech, what people have reflected on. Somebody uh, very recently gave me a book, I think it's an American priest, can't remember his name now, who's written a very beautiful book on Joseph's life. And that would be based on his prayerful reflections and he, he indeed, here we today, gathered to celebrate Mass, we have our own reflections. We probably, perhaps, pray the prayer to St. Joseph. I think there'll be some in the narthex there, the porch of the church, which perhaps the stewards will give out, if you haven't already got one beautiful prayer, divine for our, for our own diocese, uh, for this day, and indeed, for subsequent days leading up to December. And then we have the litany of St. Joseph, of course. And there's many devotions to him that have sprung up over the years, and that book I was speaking about is a very recent one. And I'm sure there's plenty on the website too uh, on, on, on which we can ponder. So today we are thinking about Joseph, not not much known, quiet, but plenty to reflect upon. Got many people have great devotion. Here he was uh, until the age of 30, presumably learning his father's trade, his foster father, Joseph. Joseph was teaching Jesus how to live out his natural life and until he got to 30, that was what he'd be doing, presumably, quietly going about his business. And Joseph then was teaching him. He was the foster father of the child Jesus, the guardian of the Holy Family, the protective guard, guide for Mary. And the example of fatherhood, not seeking perhaps recognition, certainly didn't get it in the scriptures, but there he was is a model for us. And Pius XII chose this day to be his feast on which we can pray for the workers not workers simply in the economic sense, but work as that image that we are in the image of God. We are made in the image of God. And today we perhaps pray uh, for those who work, that we can appreciate what they do, even those who have lowly paid jobs who perhaps don't get that re recognition like Joseph got, or he didn't get. 
and for, for perhaps those who have no work, those who are anxious to seek employment, for our young people who are anxious at this time about employment and the desire to fulfill their potential, if you like, not simply because of economics or wealth, but simply that is the way forward for the Christian life. So we pray for these intentions today, asking especially for Joseph's intercession, that he will guard and protect the church, us, the family of God, just as he protected the Holy Family of Nazareth. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the, the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received. The wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord. Cleanse me from my sin. So, sisters, brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the, the, this, the commemoration of Saint Joseph the Worker, you give us to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spou spouse of the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over the only, your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you heaven and the virtues of heaven, and the blessed seraphim, worship together with ex exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim holy.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Terence Patrick, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all your faithful people. Remember all our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Remember all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O Lord, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and from my divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious, we grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sin but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, Receive 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, the body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The communion antiphon, whatever you do, in, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God through him. Alleluia. So we remember our sisters and brothers who are joining us on live stream who cannot receive Holy Communion sacramentally. So with them we pray, my Jesus, I believe you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all and those you love, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our life. Amen. So thank you for your prayer and participation in this Mass today. The sacrament of reconciliation will be celebrated immediately afterwards, so feel, feel free to participate and just follow the directions of our stewards.